I'm Tip Hudson, a rangeland and livestock extension specialist with Washington State University, and I'm here to introduce a new grazing decision support tool developed with the University of Arizona and the U.S. Forest Service, which is an agency of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. StockSmart is a web application that gives everyone access to remote-sensed annual forage production data for landscapes in the 11 western states. StockSmart allows a user to create a project with multiple management units or pastures and then calculate grazing capacity in a way that incorporates spatial variation in forage production inside the project area, as well as variation over time in forage production. What makes StockSmart unique is the ability to predict animal use of the terrain and to limit forage availability to those areas actually grazable by livestock by adjusting factors like slope and distance to water in ways that match observed use in a specific landscape with a specific herd or flock. These short tutorials will help you get started. To begin working with StockSmart after you have created a login, move the map to find the general geographic area in which you want to define a grazing boundary, and then zoom in and keep moving the map until you have the area in view. Uh, note that if you're not quite sure where you're at, you can switch the map to a topographic map, and this will provide some place names and roads and features that might make it easier uh, to navigate to where you want to start. You can draw a pasture boundary or import one that you've already created in another mapping program. We're going to draw one here and then show how to edit it. Note that the pastures have to be closed polygons for this to work. So for example, if you have fence lines that you're bringing in from another application, you would need to draw polygons over the top of the fence lines. Adjacent pastures uh, may share a fence line, but you still have to have two separate polygons. I'm going to run this pasture boundary along the road and then just pick sort of an arbitrary point uh, to cross the coulee and the creek and run up the ridge line, which you can see on the topo map. Also note that if you need to move the map while you're drawing, you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. This is easier than trying to click outside of the drawing area and move the whole map. So I'm using the arrow keys to go west in order to find the edges of my demo pasture here. And when we're done, we'll double click to finish out this polygon. I'm going to save this and then we'll get a prompt that it might be a good idea to name the project and save it, which will be necessary before you can add a second pasture. We'll call this demo one. Uh, but now that we've Draw on a rough boundary, we want to edit the pasture boundaries based on a little bit more detailed view. So we can zoom in, and oftentimes we can see fence lines by selecting the satellite view. So I'm going to select the satellite view, and we're going to use this menu to the right of the pasture name to edit the polygon. Note that if you click on the body of this polygon, it's going to move the entire thing. And you probably don't want to do that. If you do that by mistake, you can use Command Z, just like you would in a word processing application, to undo that change. But we, what we want to do is edit the vertices so that we can make them match actual on the ground boundaries now that we have a rough outline. If we click on the line, it'll bring up existing vertices in orange dots and placeholders for potential new vertices in a small white dot. We're going to grab one of the orange dots to move an existing vertex. 
over to a location that we think represents an actual fence line. Then I'm using the keyboard arrow keys to move over. And we're going to select this dot in the middle to add a new vertex. So we're going to move the line to a different spot. Again, you can use the arrow keys to move around to see the edges and make those match up with a known fence line or a roadway or wherever the fence actually is. And to get the plus symbol that indicates you're about to add a new vertex, you've got to be hovering over the white dot. Now that we have a final pasture polygon, we'll save this pasture and then run the calculation to find out how much forage is here. I'm going to click Save All Changes. And then we will hit the Calculate button to apply the changes in our pasture polygon. Once we have saved the pasture and clicked on the Calculate button, we'll get a window that shows the results. And the results are a range of values that represent the highest and lowest rangeland forage production values inside that pasture multiplied by a harvest coefficient of 25%, meaning that we're calculating that 25% of the annual vegetation production is available to grazing animals, and this represents forage supply in a stocking rate calculation. Also note that one of the main features of the program is limiting stocking rate according to what's actually available to livestock. So right now, without any water sources added to the project, the program will assume that every square inch of this pasture area is fully accessible to a grazing animal. So the program is going to report forage production in animal unit months, regardless of what other herd characteristics are set. But the days of grazing are based on a default herd, which you will want to adjust under the details section in the left menu. You can either scroll along the top of the left menu to get to the details or scroll down to get to it. This top menu will become more useful as the number of pastures and water sources and exclusions gets larger, allowing you to jump to a section instead of scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. To see how many acres we've outlined in this initial pasture, click on the show forage production words and the results window will expand to show a few more figures, including total production before it's been uh, reduced by that harvest coefficient and the total number of acres. Whether we're drawing in pastures from scratch or importing fence lines and then drawing or importing polygons from an existing geospatial file, it can be really helpful to make those edges match up. So StockSmart has a snapping feature that will help clean up those shared line segments and shared vertices when you're adding adjacent pastures. We're going to zoom in to draw a new pasture. And as we approach the existing polygon, that will snap to the vertex and the line. It can either snap to the other vertex, or we can just snap to the line in the middle and then draw out the rest of the pasture from there. Many users will have map data from other applications, whether from a GIS program or Onyx or Google Earth, or Gaia GPS, to name a few common ones. StockSmart can import multiple geospatial file types. Uh, note that if you're importing from Google Earth, StockSmart and most other applications can only import a KML file, and Google Earth's export feature defaults to a KMZ file. So you'll need to select KML as the file type in the export process coming out of Google Earth. For this demo, we're going to import a single pasture from a KML file now. We'll click on the Upload button and then drag and drop the file. You can also browse to a file location if that's easier. 
We're going to click upload to accept this file. A note that when we get ready to finalize the import, we'll get a pop-up window allowing us to choose the database field name that has the pasture name, which could be applicable if we're importing from a larger geodatabase file, like a shape file that has multiple fields, only one of which will usually be the pasture name. In this case, we're importing from a Google Earth KML file, and the program will correctly interpret the incoming data without entering any new instructions here. So we'll select skip and finish importing this pasture. Now we click on add pastures to bring this in and we'll run an initial calculation. One of the primary features of StockSmart is predicting animal use of the landscape and limiting forage supply in the stocking rate calculation based on what's available. Cattle in particular are considered central place foragers whose grazing use will be less the farther a grazing area is from water. In an area like this pasture, which is exactly three miles from north to south and goes uphill as you move north, if we only had water in the south end near the highway, the north end would not receive much use. We're going to add a water source to the project and see how it changes available forage from the current range of 600 to 1200 animal unit months, which represents every 30 meter pixel of forage production on the map being equally available to livestock. We will zoom into a location where I know there are some temporary tanks during the grazing period and place a water source there. You can access the water menu either by selecting water on the top of the scroll bar in the left menu or by scrolling down along the side until you see water sources. We're going to draw a water source and we have three different kinds of water sources that could be added to the project. If we had something like a large stock pond or a lake that provided water, we could draw a polygon. If we had a stream that was a water source, we could use a polyline. And in this case, we're adding a tank, so we're going to add a point to the map. We will label this a tank. Select Save Changes. And now we will be prompted to recalculate because the program will now adjust forage availability by that distance from water. Every underlying data pixel on the map will now have a calculation applied to it. If the pixel is two miles from the water point, forage availability will be zero. And if it's one mile away, it will be 50% available. So every pixel on the map is being recalculated. And when that's done, it will give us a new results window displaying the old available forage values and the new values based on the calculation. In this case, it's a pretty dramatic difference, dropping the forage supply down to 250 to 500 animal unit months, which is less than half of the previous result. We can also see visually what areas on the map are accessible and not accessible by clicking on the map options menu on the right side of the map screen this three layer icon and selecting maximum distance to water. This will also pop up a legend indicating that the more orange values mean that forage is not available and the blue values indicate that it is available. Now we can see that most of the northern part of this pasture is excluded from forage available calculations because our water source is mostly in the south. What we may want to do now is fine tune this water availability based on actual landscape use, because some herds will travel farther to water and some travel less. And if we want to change the distance at which animal use is zero, which right now is set at the default of two miles, we can scroll down to the land details section toward the bottom of this left menu. We're going to select 
three miles and we will see how that changes available forage. We're going to recalculate. The new results are 370 animal unit months on the lowest year and 720 AUMs in the highest year in the previous 40. This is significantly higher than what we had before. And we can also now see on the map that quite a bit more of the central part of this pasture from north to south is now available to grazing animals. One key feature of Stock Smart is the ability to compare various combinations of water or slope steepness that animals will use or different pasture cross fences and herd characteristics and see how those changes affect available forage and grazing capacity. As we saw in the video about adding water, when once you add water, you will have a, a results window that displays the previous calculations and the new calculations. Stock Smart is not saving that memory, it's just a temporary display. But if you want to retain that difference in results, we can use the scenario feature to create a new scenario based on our changes. What we're going to do now is add a new water source and see how that changes forage availability across the pasture. I'm going to add a scenario, which is going to duplicate the current scenario. We're going to call it new water on ridge. Now we're going to add a water tank. On the top of this tall ridge. On a bench. We'll call it new tank. We'll save the water point and we will be prompted for the recalculation. We now have a new scenario that indicates we have something like a 10% increase in available forage based on that new watering site. If we had not created a new scenario, when this box comes up and then we click all done, there'd be no way of seeing the previous results. Uh, but now we have two scenarios, one with the existing water source and one that has both water sources. And if we want to compare those results, we can click on compare just below the results box. And this will bring up a table that shows both what we changed in terms of details, as well as the difference in results in our new scenario. Uh, in this case, we have the new scenario pushed to the left of the table and it is highlighted since that's the one that we're currently working on. There are a growing number of decision support tools out there to inform grazing management, but StockSmart is unique in the ability to integrate user-defined livestock terrain use based on fences and water and slope with remote-sensed forage production data that is variable across time. The StockSmart team hopes you will give this application the test drive and let us know what you think by contacting our team through the website stock-smart.com.